Well, today is a very special day. Um, we have a couple of families that we uh, want to introduce to you today. It is our baby dedication Sunday. And I really enjoy this time because um, I get to introduce them all to you, show you their sweet little ones that they're bringing. Um, but it's also a time that we as a family get to love on them and get to know them a little better. Um, that as we see each other in the hallways, that we understand that we are a, a large family, that we love one another, we support one another, we pray for one another. And as families, seeing these sweet little ones, if you are a parent at all, you understand what they're going through. And so as you see them in the hallways, you get to encourage them a little bit, love on them, spend some time with them, get to know them. Um, but these are some incredible families. And so I'm going to introduce you uh, to them and then uh, we'll share a few things with them. But over here to start with, we have Miss Enola Bird and she's the daughter of Ben and Katie Bird. And they have chosen a life verse. And our life verse is basically just a verse that they choose that they're saying uh, throughout her life, we're going to pray this over her. We're going to believe that God is going to use this verse all along her life to be able to help lead her back to God, to the Lord, knowing that he's with her and that he loves her. And so the verse that they have chosen is found in Isaiah 41, verse 10. And it says this, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So if you would give the birds a hand clap and sweet Enola. Over here we have sweet Esther Holly and she is the daughter of Andrew and Natalie Holly. And the life verse that they have chosen is found in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. If you would give them a hand. Well, we just want to, um, I want to start off by welcoming you. If you are here and a part of their families, uh, their, their family unit, obviously if you're here, uh, you are super important to them. And you're a part of their lives, a part of helping them raise their kids. You're, I'm sure, babysitting, doing all those things. But then also as our church family, uh, we want to say thank you as well because we know it takes a village. And so we all work together in this, loving on them, caring for them, being here for them, supporting them, but also praying for them. And so this is a, a special moment. Um, this is not salvation necessarily for their child. We believe that and are praying that as their child develops their own relationship with the Lord, as they uh, spend time with the Lord, as they grow and they learn, that they will make that decision for themselves. So what is this moment all about really? Uh, this moment here that we all get to celebrate together is really about the parents, that they're committing themselves to the Lord first and foremost, and then they're committing themselves to each other of saying, hey, we are, we are doing this, we're walking this thing out by faith, we're believing God is going to give us wisdom uh, to be able to raise this child and all of the gifts and things that are within them. And then also, uh, they're committing themselves to their child to say, you know what, I'm here for you, I support you, I will love you, I will cherish you, but I'm going to train you, I'm gonna lead you and guide you in the ways of the Lord. And so this is a special moment, uh, you know, you can look, read back in Samuel and how Hannah had dedicated her child um, back to the Lord. She was praying and believing for a child and could not have a child. And as she went to the temple and she prayed and she believed and she was in prayer, the priest saw her there and, and told her, it's gonna be okay, you'll be having a child soon enough. And off she went. And as she went home, I'm sure wondering, is it really going to happen? Am I, will I really have a child, as the priest had said? And I'm sure she went home and prayed prayers of faith, believing and holding on to the promise that God had given her, that she was holding on to. And I'm sure she sat and she prayed and she prayed for her child that was to come. And as she became pregnant and gave birth to this beautiful baby, I'm sure in that moment, all of that promises that she had gone through and remembered of crying out and praying were being fulfilled in her arms. And as she looked down at him, knowing and trusting that, God, you have great things for this child. You have great plans for, these, for this kid. Not fully understanding what it was going to look like, but trusting her heavenly father. By faith, she believed. And through the help of the Lord, she raised Samuel, brought him back, dedicated him to the temple, allowed him to, to be there with Eli and the priest. And he was trained and raised up to be a mighty man of God. And as parents today, we're committing to three things. We're in that similar situation of saying, we want to dedicate ourselves to the Lord because we know without him, we can't do this. So with him and his understanding, we're holding on to the promise that this child, Lord, that you have given us is a gift from the Lord. That you've blessed us with this child. 
that you've given us this child and there's great gifts and talents and abilities within them. You've, he has formed them in their mother's womb. And as you believe that and hold on to that promise and remember that, when you look at them, when times are good, when they start to give you trouble, and as parents, we all know those times come. But when you look at them, you remember the promise and the good gift that the Lord has given you. And you believe by faith that God is working and moving in and through their life as well. Also, you're committing, number two, to tra- that you are training up this child in the way they should go. And training is a, is a process. It's not a quick fix. It's not something that you do in a day. It's not a quick answer that I can give you, and it just happens. Parenting, training, leading them in the ways of the Lord is a daily thing. It's discipleship. This is where discipleship starts. By training and leading, by praying over them, by praying with them, by teaching them the scriptures, by putting them in environments where they will grow and flourish. And you will watch this beautiful thing, child that as they begin to dig roots into the word of the Lord and trust in him and discover their own faith, they become like this beautiful plant that begins to flourish and grow. And you begin to watch that process. And it's incredible. It's an incredible process to be a part of. But it takes time. It takes energy. It takes prayer. It takes you digging in and you reading your Bible. It takes you asking the Holy Spirit for wisdom and trusting him. So you, number three, then, are committing to leading yourself in the ways of the Lord first and foremost. Because as you trust, as you believe, as you spend time, it makes it that much easier then to know, Lord, as I follow you, they begin to follow me. As I follow Christ, they are going to follow after me. As I worship the Lord, they're going to worship. As I go to church, they're going to go to church. As we as a family go and act in ways that are of love and kindness and goodness, and as I share of the Lord's faithfulness and mercy and truth, they walk in those ways as well. And it's not always easy. Right now you're in the phase of dirty diapers, um, crying, long nights. Uh, with a time change, I was like, okay, hopefully we'll all, this will help. Maybe we'll get an extra hour sleep. And they're like, no, they just got up an hour earlier. And I was like, oh, I saw that one coming. But through the whole process, as you trust the Lord, as you develop and you dig in and you believe God to fulfill the promises that he's continuing to give to, to you and for this little one, you will watch them grow and flourish in their faith. And it will be a process that you will never regret as you pour into them, you share your faith with them, you walk alongside them, you encourage them, you build them up, you speak the truth over them. You will watch God do some incredible things in you and also in them. And so we're gonna take a few minutes here because we believe that this is a family effort. We as, as chapel want to come alongside of you. And so we're gonna ask that you would extend your hand in just a few moments, Pastor Robbie's gonna come and we're gonna pray and believe over these little ones that all of the promises that God has given you as moms and dads that are, you are keeping in your heart and you are believing for, that they will come to pass and you will walk and you will walk alongside of them and see God do some incredible things along the way. So let's pray together. Yeah, we'll let Toy give the holy kiss. This kiss is a beautiful kiss. It gets you out of speeding tickets and everything else too, it works. So if you would, just reach your hands towards them. We just want to pray for these families. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of life. That you decide to give life through family, through a husband, through a wife, who love you, who are committed to you, who are dedicated to you. And Father, they give you their lives. In return, you give them the gift of children that carry your purposes, carry your anointing, carry your ministry, and carry your kingdom with them wherever they go. That's why we pray right now for the gifts of the Holy Spirit in these children. The gifts will flow out of them into the world around them. We pray for the fruit of the Holy Spirit that flows out of their lives, that they cultivate in their homes, produces joy and love and patience and kindness and gentleness and meekness and long-suffering, all these things that the world can enjoy. Father, we pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, that you allow for your wisdom to flow in them and through them, that you allow for your wisdom to guide them and direct them, that their behavior is a representation of your kingdom that is now and to come. And so we thank you for your protection over their lives, over their minds, over their hearts, over their bodies, over their spirits. Father, against every single attack of the enemy, and Father, we pray for the seed of the gospel that is sown in their lives, is sown into the good ground and produces a hundredfold return in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Give them a big round of applause real quick.
Well, today is a very special day. Today is um, our baby dedication service, and we are just always excited to be able to uh, meet some new families, see their new little sweet babies, uh, and I get to, uh, the wonderful privilege of introducing them to you so you can see them all, um, but then also uh, so that way you can also love on them. As you see them walking in the hallways, as you see them in Chapel Kids, uh, get to know these families, spend some time with them, love on them, uh, encourage them, let them know, hey, We've, you've got this, keep going, right? Um, because we know that parenting is not something that is, um, you know, ha that is just a one deal, one day deal. This is a very long journey that is ahead, but it is such a fruitful and amazing season in your lives to be able to pour in to them and to love on these sweet babies. And so uh, if you are here and joining them, uh, you're here for one of these families that are present, we welcome you. Uh, if they're important to, enough for you to come and be a part of that, uh, then you are important to us and we are thankful that you are here joining us as our church family, uh, this is just an incredible opportunity that we have to continue to love on our family uh, and be a part of their lives as we all partner together here at chapel, uh, loving on one another, encouraging each other, and walking our faith out every single day, knowing that it looks very different um, because we all have families, we have kids at different ages, but as we do this together, uh, we can watch God work in amazing and incredible ways. And so we are thankful that you are here, uh, that you are joining us today. We just have uh, an incredible opportunity to uh, meet some new families. So I'm going to start uh, in introducing you uh, to a handful of them. So all the way down at the end over here, we have River Chambers, and he is the son of Austin and Caitlin Chambers, and they have chosen a life verse. Each family has chosen a verse that they are believing and praying for and over their child. And so as we read these, and I read them over their children, uh, just um, you know, partner in that, believing God to do some incredible things, not just today, but through the course of their life through this verse. So they have chosen the verse Jeremiah 29, 11. It says for this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. And I know Rivers has, is tiny, but he's mighty. He's been through a lot already, but God is blessing and watching over that family. And we are so grateful and thankful that they are part of chapel today and part of this service. So if you would give them a hand clap. Next, we have Riley Elliott, and he is the son of Bradley and Abby Elliott. And they have chosen several verses. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1, 7, Isaiah 41, 10, and Proverbs 3, 3 through 6. Today I'll be reading 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Go ahead and give them a hand. Next we have Miss Evie Scott. And the, we are there here with the Keenums. She is the daughter of Daniel and Michelle Keenum. And the verse that they have chosen is found in Psalms 20, verse 4. And it says, may he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill all your plans. Go ahead and give the Keenums a hand. Next, we have Easton Patterson, and Dad was right. He is in the middle of nap time, so great job. Perfect timing. Excellent. So Easton is the son of Luke and Megan Patterson, and the verse that they have chosen comes from Proverbs 3, 3 through 6. It says, Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good success of, in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Go ahead and give them a hand. And on the tail end here, we have Reed Phillips, and he is the son of Rocky and Chelsea Phillips. And the verse they have chosen comes from Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Go ahead and give them a hand. We are so grateful and thankful for the families that make up chapel. We would not be here if it weren't for you all. As we come together and we spend time together, as we worship together, as we grow together and mature in our faith, this is what it's about. It's about families coming together saying, we're doing this together. We're not perfect. We don't have it all figured out. But one thing we do and one thing we can come together under is knowing that we are serving and doing our best to serve the living God. And so as we do this, this moment here is not salvation for the child. Baby dedication 
uh, is not about their salvation. We believe that one day each and one of them are going to experience the Lord in an incredible way and accept Jesus as their own personal Savior. So what is this moment about? Uh, this moment here that we celebrate together is actually about you as the families, as the parents. Today, in this moment, you're declaring that you are serving the Lord. You've committed your hearts to the Lord. And now you've committed yourselves to one another. And now in this moment, you're committing yourselves to these sweet children that you hold in your hands. And you're saying, well, I'm living my life following after the Lord. I'm trusting in him that the Holy Spirit is going to help us and empower us, that we're going to walk this thing together, and we're going to watch as our children grow and flourish in all the plans that God has for them. And so there's three things that you're committing to today. Uh, in this moment, there's three things that you're saying. And that you, Number one, that you know that this child that you hold in your hands is the sweet gift from the Lord. That he has formed them, that he has created them, that he has put incredible gifts and talents and abilities within them. That he has called them according to his purposes and his plans. And he has good plans for them. And that as they grow and as they mature and flourish, that you as parents can steward that well that you can pull out those good gifts and abilities and talents and things and their spirit and their relationship with the Lord to help them develop. And God has given you and equipped you with everything you need to be able to be successful in that as you trust and believe on him and him alone. Number two, you're committing that in this moment, you are training these children up in the ways of the Lord. Whatever it looks like, they're there. If there is that they are, need to develop that personal relationship, you're bringing them to environments and spaces. You're surrounding them with family and people that love them, that care for them, but are teaching them the truth and the word of God. You yourself are sharing the word and praying over them, but praying with them and spending time with them. You're leading them and guiding them. You're, you're speaking words over them, knowing that God has incredible things for them. We are believing and hoping to pass our faith from one generation to the next. Amen? That it doesn't just end with us. The things that we've broken and things that we've stopped, things that our families have maybe dealt with in the past are broken because you guys are making that decision here today and it has been passed on to your children, to that next generation. And that's powerful. So in this moment, as you commit yourselves to the Lord, to each other and to your family, knowing that this moment is where disciples are made. It's right here in the home. We outsource it to a lot of different areas, but it's in the home. As you pray and you believe and you hold on to the promises that God has given you, that you speak life and truth over these children and you watch them grow and flourish and be planted and just like a plant, as the roots grow down deep in the Lord, as they follow you as you lead by example, which is what you're, the third thing you're committing to today, you lead by example, they follow you. They see you, they watch you every day. And as they do, as you follow Jesus, they will begin to follow you. As you trust in the Lord, they will trust in the Lord. As you speak of faith and truth and life, they will follow behind. As you worship and spend time with the Lord, they will follow behind. And so as you commit to these things today, it is a journey and it is a process. It takes time, but it will be one of the most incredible things that you've ever seen happen. As you watch their roots grow down deep, as their faith begins to grow, as their faith flourishes, as they mature, as they make their own decisions to follow Jesus and to be baptized and to grow. And as they do that, they're like a beautiful plant that begins to flourish and grow. And as a parent, that is one of the most incredible things that you can watch and be a part of. And so today, uh, we are going to pray for you because we know that in this moment, uh, parenting is not always easy. Right now, you're probably into your elbows with dirty diapers and sleepless nights, am I right? Uh, lack of naps and just being tired trying to go from places to places and feeling like you're packing and traveling with huge suitcases everywhere you go. It is not always easy, but you have everything that you need as long as you stay connected to the, your Father. He has equipped you. And so we as a church family are here to surround you, to support you, to pray for you, to love on you, and we encourage you that this is one of the most incredible things and journeys you will ever be a part of. Be intentional with your parenting, love well, teach and train them well, stay committed to the process, and watch how they grow and flourish.
And so we are going to pray together as a church family. If you would, uh, reach out your hands, and Pastor Robbie's going to pray. pray. We let Toya give the holy kiss, which I joked at first service. This kiss is a blessing from God, but it also gets you out of speeding tickets if you get pulled over. So it's a beautiful thing to see families that are trying to make Jesus the centerpiece of their family. And a lot of times... Life kind of revolves around the, the, the child, like you're running from daycare and running to events and soccer and basketball and baseball and football. But life is not called to be lived around your kid. It's called to live around Jesus and his gospel and his kingdom. And so you make a decision today that we're going to make Jesus the centerpiece of our family, which is a powerful statement to the enemy, but also a powerful statement to a world that's watching how you raise your children, watch them blossom and flourish like Toya said. But if you just reach your hands towards them as we just pray. Father, we thank you so much for life, for how you decided to reproduce life here on earth through a love of a mother and a father who love each other in covenant, unconditional love and mercy. And out of that flows the life of a newborn baby carrying gifts, promises, purposes, plans. Father, as you said in Jeremiah 1, that you knew these children before their parents even thought of them. And you formed them in their mother's womb. And you consecrated them and set them apart for your purposes, for your plans. That, Father, they are your gifts to this world around us, each one of them carrying the joy of heaven within them, carrying love within them, carrying joy, carrying the fruit of the Spirit with them everywhere they go. And so, Father, every time you want to do a new thing, you raise up a new generation. We pray for this generation right now that health, strength, endurance, the fruit of the Spirit, Father, also the gifts of the Spirit flow in and through these children. Father, I pray for these homes to be a place of your presence, a place filled with joy and with hope and with unconditional love, which is the environment where all God's things grow is within love. Father, we pray for your purposes, your power. We pray for your protection upon each one of these children, that every single assignment of the enemy, even in Jeremiah 1, there was an assignment against Jeremiah. But we pray for the assignments. We rebuke those. We pray that you protect their minds, their hearts, their spirits, their bodies, that you allow for them to flourish and grow in protection. Even in Psalms 91, angels surrounding them, protecting them from every single thing that comes against them. Father, we pray they flourish and grow in the ways and the knowledge and the wisdom of you. In the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen, amen. Give them a big round of applause real quick.